a wall, retaining wall. And the retaining wall, let's say we have a height of two and a half. So we got, I'm just going to annotate on this drawing, right? 2.5 here. Sorry, see if I can make it a bit neater and nicer. So that height is two and a half meters, OK? We've got B, which is 1.5, the foundation. OK, we've got the height to the outside. I've taken it as zero. Now let me tell you why I've taken it as zero. I'm saying, I'm assuming that the they haven't put any fill in the front yet. OK, so what would happen? So I'm looking at that sort of scene. All right, then I made both the wall and the base one and uh, 150 thick. And 150 thick here as well. OK, sounds a bit thin, but anyway, let's just go with it. 150 there, or 0.15, sorry, just to keep the units in order. Let me write it correctly. 0, 0,15 and 0, 0,15. It's a bit thin considering that we need to put the reinforcing in, so to ensure this blinding in the foundation, if I want to use such a thin one, probably better to go for point two. But anyway, for now, let's just leave it like that. OK, angle of internal friction. So that's what we normally call a theta of phi. What's it called in the book normally? I just want to keep the uh, notation the way it is in the book, so there's no confusion. All right. What is the angle of internal friction called usually? Theta, right? So let's write it as theta here. So theta, I was trying to copy this thing, but let me just write, it's easier. Right, so theta is equal to 30 degrees. And then density of the soil is equal to 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter, all right? Ka, we can calculate that in Kp, but uh, phi, all right? For calculating friction, I use 30. Yeah. I use 30 degrees there as well. And if I take 10 phi, so I'm taking mu to be equal to, I know in Greg's book it says uh, 10 theta minus five, but I'm just assuming 10, 30 there. What does it give us? So 10 of 30, I get 0.577, which is a bit high, but anyway, I'm just gonna use that for now, right? OK, that's it. That's all I really need. Uh, let me get rid of these other things. I don't need any of that. I don't need any of that. OK, so. Let's do this together. Right, so we're going to start with. The overturning moment. And the sliding moment and the ground pressure in the same way we do it, OK? Right, so we know we're going to have uh, there's no there's no I'm doing a very basic one where there's no surcharge and there's no uh, what's the other word called a sloping bank etc. So I'm doing a very basic fundamental one in the most common type of retaining wall. All right, so let's go to the pressure. So we're looking at that pressure diagram. OK, and what is the pressure here at the bottom? It's going to be Ka times density. Sorry, let me just use a symbol. Ka times density times height. Now, what is Ka? We can calculate Ka because we've got 30 degrees, so it's 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. What does that give us? 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. Check on your calculator, please. I get 0.333, is that correct? 1 minus sine, so sine of 30 is 0.5, right? 
So 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5 divided by 1 plus 0.5 is 1.5. I get 0.333. Do you guys agree with that number? Yes. Yes. Right. Now, what is KP? What is the passive? Well, I don't need it because I haven't got anything in the front. So we could calculate KP, but I'm not going to use it now. If I get stuck and I'm in trouble, then we look at it. But KP would be the opposite, right? KP would be one plus. So it's going to be one and a half divided by. This one was 0.5 divided by 1.5 in the calculation, right? This one is going to be 1.5 divided by 0.5. So it's three. OK, but I don't need it. Right, so I'm just putting it down just uh, in case we need to use it later. Right, so what is K times density times H? It's going to be 0.333 times this is three recurring, but we'll just use it like that. And this is 18. And the height there, remember from the top to the bottom, two and a half, when we're doing the overturning and the other one, okay? So what does that give me? 0.333 times 18 times two and a half. 14.985, so I just said let's make it. It's actually 14.985. You could say 15, right? Okay, a unit. What is the unit of this? K is a factor. 18 is kilonewtons per cubic meter, two and a half is, uh, is meters, right? So the unit is 14.985 kilonewtons per, 14.985 kilonewtons per square meter, all right? So what is the force? If for, so, okay, so let's do the calculation then, all right? Uh, the overturning moment. We're checking first, what is our overturning moment? So to get my overturning moment, I need a force, right? What is the value of that force? So this is stress. Uh, I need to write a symbol there. Uh, so this is stress, uh, oops, space to fit it in. So I'll use the usual symbol, which looks like this, stress. Okay, what is F? is equal to stress times area, correct? So I've got one meter and I've got the height. So I've got force is equal to 14.895, which is the base times the height. What's the height? What's the height we're looking at? Two and a half meters. And it's a triangle. Therefore, I have to divide it by two. So 14.895 times 2.5 divided by two. The force is going to be 18 point. Okay, shall I just use 15, guys, just to round it off? Let's stick with 15, okay? Let's just stick with 15. Otherwise, we're going to be playing around with these small decimals and it'll irritate us. So let's just go with 15 here. OK, so it's going to be 15 times 2.5 times a half divided by 2. So what does that give us? 15 times 2.5 divided by 2, 18.75 kilonewtons. All right, so that's 18.75. So this is the F. Where does it act? It acts at one third, correct? It acts at one third. H, right. So moment is going to be equal to 18,75 times uh, one third of H. It's going to be 2.5 divided by three. So what does that give me? 
times 2.5 divided by 3, 15 comma, comma 6, 2.5 kilonewton meters. All right, you can just put 15 comma 6 is good enough, but OK, 15 comma 6, good enough, one decimal place. All right. Please stop me at any point if you have a query, right? Let's go for restoring. Stabilizing, if you want to call it, or restoring. So stabilizing moments. What do we have for stabilizing moments? Let's tabulate these, OK? So we've got backfill. Which is this thing here? Right, so that's the backfill. Okay, what else do we have? We have the wall, which is that item. We have the foundation, which is that item. Okay, so three things. Backfill, let's start with the backfill. What's the height? Let's tabulate this. What's the height? Um, sorry, what is the height, guys? I'll put in a a ruler just now. Height. What's the height for the backfill? What's the height? Two and a half is the whole height from the top of the soil to the bottom of foundation. So what is it? 2.35, correct? Okay. Width? What is the width of the backfill? It's 1.5 minus the 150 wall, which is going to be 1.35. OK, what is its density? Its density is 18. OK, therefore its weight. You can put this in many ways. You can write the whole thing out, but I just prefer to put it in a table. All right, so multiply 2.35 times 1.35 times 18. And that gives me 57, 1. I'll leave out the other parts, right? It's actually 57,105, all right? Okay, and then you've got the lever arm. We'll come to that in a second. Okay, let's just finish it off while we are here. What is the lever arm? Where is overturning taking place? Overturning is taking place there, right? That's point, let's call it A. So overturning is taking about, place about point A. So you want to know the centroid of that force from A, what is that dimension? What is that dimension going to be? It's going to be uh, the width of the footing on which the uh, thing sits, which is 2.35 divided by 2 is 1.175, 1.175 plus 0.15 gives me 1. Point, sorry. My apologies. 1.5 minus 0.15 is 1.35 divided by 2 is 0.675 plus 0.15 is 0.825. So my lever arm is 0, 0,825. Is everybody happy with that? Any questions? Nope. OK, what is the moment? While I'm at it, I'm just going to complete the row, what is the bending moment? The bending moment is going to be the weight times the lever arm. So 57.105 times 0.825 gives me 47,1. Okay, then I move on to the uh, Wall. What's the width of the height of the wall? Sorry, from the bottom. Now it depends how you want to split this. Okay, do you want to take the wall up to there and take the foundation as the full bottom part? That's fine. So let's do it like that. Two point three five times the distance is point. The width is point one five. The density of concrete is twenty four. Okay. The weight will therefore be 2.35 times 0.15 times 24, and it gives me 8,46. 
right? And the lever arm is going to be 0, 0,075. You all happy with that? Which gives me a moment of 8,46 times 0 0.075. 0.635, so it actually contributes very little, right? 0.6, okay, and then we go to the uh, base. If it's too close to the point about which it's overturning, it doesn't do actually much. Base is going to be uh, 150 in terms of the height times one and a half, uh, sorry, the height is 0.15, the width is 1.5 times 24 times, what does that give me? 0.15 times 1.5 times 24 is 5.4. Okay. 5.4. The lever arm is going to be 0, 0,75. So the middle of the foundation coming back to the corner where it's going to overturn A, right? So I've got 5.4 times 0 0.75, 4 0.05, 4 0.1. Okay, right, let's add the weight up. So let me just create a little bit of uh, rule lines there. So looks a bit neater. Okay, so let's take the totals. What is the total weight? What is the total weight? What is the total weight and what is the total moment, right? Because we want M and we want N. So what does that give us? 57.105 plus 8.46 plus 5.4. Gives me a total of 70,965, so I'm going to say approximately 71. 47.1 plus 0.6 plus 4.1 gives me 51,8. Okay, so therefore, factor of safety is equal to what? What's my factor of safety? My moment, this is my restraining moment, don't forget, or stabilizing, restraining or stabilizing, right? Whichever word you prefer, 51,8. So that is what's preventing the wall from overturning. What's causing the wall to overturn is the 15.8, 15.6, sorry, 15,6. Right, therefore I have a nice factor of safety of how much? 51.8 divided by 15.6, which leaves me with 3.32, which is greater than one and a half. Okay, therefore, okay. Any questions? Any questions? All right, so we did the first stability check, which is overturning, and we're happy. Let's move on to the uh, sliding one. Sliding. Okay, so we're checking sliding. All right, I checked overturning. Now I'm checking sliding. What is the force causing the sliding? What is the force causing the sliding? F is equal to what's pushing the wall? It's a horizontal force, correct? And the horizontal force we worked out to be, we calculated it to be 18,75. So that's the force causing the sliding is equal to 18,75. What's resisting it? The frictional resistance. So let's put that in, frictional. Resistance is equal to mu. This is the way you learnt it, times n, the normal force. What is mu? 
What is mu? Mu we calculate it to be 0.577 times what is the normal force? What's all the weight that we worked out? 71. 0.577 times 71 is 40,9. So we'll just say 41 approximately. All right, this is kilonewtons versus kilonewtons. Therefore, the factor of safety is. Is equal to 41 divided by 18,75, which is equal to. 2.186, so I'll just say 2.2, which is greater than 1.5, therefore it is okay. All right, so let's say I had a lower coefficient of friction. Let's say I had something like 0.3. So I'd have 0.3 times uh, 71. It'll only give me 21. 21 divided by 18.75. It works, but it's 1.136. So if I was if I was under, what would I have done? I'd have checked now what soil is going to be in front of the wall, right? And I would have used that passive pressure to help me resist. Okay, but in this case, just the backfill was adequate and my frictional, uh, my mu was quite high, so I was okay. All right. So, but if I was in trouble, I can do one of two things. As I said, I can mobilize the uh, passive pressure, okay? which is acting against the active one. So I can mobilize KP, which I haven't done here yet. I've just used the friction and it's good enough. All right. If I'm still in trouble, then what do you think I can do? I can do this in the foundation. I can add a key to it. All right. So what this does is it increases the passive pressure triangle. So these are options that you can use. All right. So anyway. Uh, Whatever I'm telling you here, it's all practical stuff. And remember, retaining walls is like bread and butter for a consulting engineer. It's something you do all the time. OK, sliding. We've done. Factor of safety is OK. We're happy with that. Let's move on next to ground pressure. Ground pressure. And what's going to happen here is we're going to take, if we just use the uh, eccentricity way, what is eccentricity? What is eccentricity? It's equal to, come on guys. How do we do the eccentricity? Okay, come. Look, we did it in the example from the book. How do we do the eccentricity? L over 2 minus ms minus mo divided by w, right? So you got L over 2 right? minus ms stabilizing moment minus the overturning moment divided by the load, w, the weight. So what do I have here? L over 2 is 1.5 divided by 2. See where this brings you. This brings you to the center of the base, right? Minus the MS over MO. MS is, what is MS? Stabilizing moment. We had it somewhere here just now. Stabilizing moment is 51.8. Minus the overturning moment, and the overturning moment was? 15,6 divided by W, and W, of course, was 71. Okay, so that will give us uh, 1.5 divided by 2.75 minus open brackets 51.8. Minus 15.6 divided by 71. I get 0 0.24. Zero 
0.24 meters. Right, so this is 0, 0.24 meters. L over 6. L over 6 is equal to 1.5 divided by 6, which is 0.25. Therefore, ECC is in middle. Sorry. Is in the middle third. And if it's in the middle third, then I can use the formula. P is equal to. What's the formula for the pressure? P is equal to. W over L. Into one plus or minus. Six times ECC. Divided by L. OK, and that will give us. W is with OW 71 divided by the length, which is 1.5, 1 plus or minus 6 times 0.24 divided by 1.5. Gives us how much? 47.33 plus or minus 6 times 0.24 divided by one and a half. Um, no, something. Sorry, let's just double check that, guys. Let's just double check that. Have I got the right numbers there? Eccentricity is uh, correct point. Two four. So right, it falls within the middle third. Minimum pressure, and we need the maximum pressure. Okay, so plus. Oh yes, I'm not multiplying it. I forgot. I have to multiply it by the outside. Sorry. So it's 0 0.96 times, what is that? Uh, 71 divided by 1.5, 45 point, oops, 45. Don't forget that gets multiplied to that, which I almost forgot. 4, 4. Okay, so I get minimum is going to be 47.33 minus 45.44, 1.89 megapascals on you. Sorry, what am I saying? We're dealing with kilonewtons and meters here, so this is going to be kilonewtons per square meter and maximum Right, is going to be is going to be the sum of these two forty seven point three three plus forty five point four ninety two point seven three. Okay, kilonewtons per square meter, or you can call it KPA. All right, so that's the the all the stuff that we're going to do under. Uh, normal loads, unfactored loads. Next is to do the ultimate limit states, to calculate the stresses, to calculate the force, and to turn it into a design situation for the wall and the foundation. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. It's, uh, or shall we just go on and calculate the uh, ultimate, or you want to stop at this point and take it up tomorrow? What's your suggestion? 
Because tomorrow, whatever I said, what time are we starting? We're starting tomorrow at nine o'clock, right? And we can go on till about 11, 11.30. So, Uh, do you want to stop or do you want to carry on? And carry on tomorrow. Simba, Mudli, somebody say something. Do you want to stop at this point or continue? Can we carry on tomorrow, sir? Okay, all right, but on one condition. You know the tutorial that I gave you? You do the first part up to this point. Okay, is that fair? All right. Okay, you do that first part and then you finish the balance after we finish this example, and then I'll put that solution up for the tutorial. Okay, after that on the weekend, I'll put the solution up for the tutorial link and you can, and you can check, right? And then if you have any issues, you can discuss it with me. OK, so let's stop here. And uh, where am I? All right.